Hello once again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and the purpose of this video is to try to dispel rumors about the purpose of the tang on taper shank drill bits. Many people misunderstand that. Many people have been trying to correct me and tell me the truth, but I'm going to tell you the truth right now. And uh, remember that tang is just not oh, another wonderful breakfast drink, but it is this protrusion on the end of large drill bits. So let's get started. The purpose of the tang on the end of a taper shank drill bit is to prevent the drill from twisting in the drill press spindle or the lathe quill or whatever it may be. Now the secondary purpose is to allow you to eject the drill from the quill, but primarily it keeps the drill from twisting. Now this is the end of the video for many of you people, but of course I can't shut up so it'll be another 12 to 15 minutes long if you want to stick with me. But I've already told you the gospel truth. I'm sure you've all seen damaged or twisted or broken off tangs on the end of drill bits through your lifetime if you've been around along here along enough. Here's an example here. Look at the tang is just plain broken off of this device, but often you see them twisted. I could not find any in my collection even though I have hundreds of these because I tend to throw things like that away. But what you will also see quite often is galling of the shank and that's caused because the twist drill spins in the quill. Or I should say the drill spins in the quill, especially on the larger sizes. The torque is tremendous. Now, in smaller on smaller lathes, like this is the tailstock quill out of an Atlas lathe. And if you could look in here, and you're not going to be able to see that, it is quite galled up. Well, let me try it with a flashlight. I, of course it's dead, or almost dead, when I need it. All right, here's plan B with some good batteries. Can you see inside there the galling? So you don't want the drill bit to spin. And uh, I'm going to show you later on, on a way of preventing that, but this happens to everyone, so it's damaging the quill and the drill. So from time to time you need to take a Morse taper reamer in there and clean these a little bit. I know that a lot of you don't have those reamers. I have shown those in other videos over the years, but with your drills, hold them in a three-jaw chuck, turn the machine on and very gently file off the burrs because it'll only get worse and those burrs are going to damage the quill as well. Now notice that in this Atlas quill there is no tang slot. This is the quill out of my 12 inch closet. This is a number two Morse taper. This is a number three, but there is a tang slot there. So it prevents the drill from twisting and allows you to eject it if you need to. But normally we eject the drill just by backing up the tailstock hand wheel. Anybody disagreeing with me so far? Raise your hands. I still see two or three going up. While I'm on the subject, I'm going to show you something that's slightly unrelated. But let's pretend that this is the quill on a drill press, not a lathe. And quite often over the years I would see at the school kids ejecting uh, a drill bit and they would simply put the well I better put a, a drill in there like this they would put the drift in there and of course it would take quite a bit of effort so what they would do sometimes I said don't let the drill drop and damage the table now to prevent that I'll hang on to it like this as you hit this so now they have one hand tied up down here and they're going to strike this and as they do they have to sometimes hit it quite hard and quite often this would literally fly across the room they would hit it so hard so there are drill drifts that are made to prevent that sometimes I think they're called safety drifts did I say bits or drifts but look at the little I don't know what you call that, but see it can't fall through because of that. 
and here's another style but this is the wrong size for this so it might still fall through but this little thing right here by my thumb prevents that from happening well I won't go through that one either even though that's the wrong size so that's just a little side light the beauty of this type of Armstrong drift is that you can hang you don't need a hammer see so you got your hand down here holding the drill and you can just pound on it plus it can't get away so these are pretty good but they're rare as a hen's tooth a very short lesson on tapers a Morse taper and a Brown and Sharp and a Jarno and so on are said to be self-holding tapers they are very shallow tapers if, if that's a, a word uh, about five-eighths of an inch per foot as opposed to the more steeper type of taper like this number 30 milling machine taper it is not self-holding that's why there are slots here to actually do the driving but the purpose of tapers of course is for accuracy and alignment of the tool in a machine spindle so these have tremendous holding power but at some point with enough torque they probably are going to twist in the quill or the spindle and that's the purpose again of the tang to prevent that I've looked through several machine shop books in regards to this so I'll zoom in here on just one sentence is all that they use to cover this topic so here it says that this friction drive is not enough to prevent the drill from slipping under a heavy cutting load. The flat tang on the end of the shank of the drill permits a positive drive. And now a paragraph out of this old textbook. So let's read this paragraph. The purpose of the tang is to help drive the drill since the hold of the taper alone is not sufficient. It must be understood, however, that the tang alone is not sufficient to drive the drill or other cutting tool and consequently the taper shank and the hole must be properly fitted, clean and dry and so on. Okay, I'm not going to attempt to document uh, what I'm telling you here any more than I already have, but I looked through this Cleveland book booklet and there's nothing in there about that I think they just assume that everybody knows what I have already told you but do an internet search asking what is the purpose of the tang and you're gonna find a lot of the truth but you'll hear a lot of the myths also that are strictly used for ejecting that is wrong that is a secondary purpose I invite your many comments, criticisms, corrections, and so on in the comment section below. There are various devices to prevent a drill from spinning. Here are a couple, but I'm more interested in this one. I did have one at school. I don't believe I ever did use it. But you can see you've got quite a bit of leverage here by the handle and there is in fact a center hole right here that you cannot see but sometimes a twist drill will pull itself into the work and then it would get pulled out of the center which is centering it and supporting it so and they're available in what five or six sizes here have you ever seen one of these let me show you a way that you can use on your small lathes to prevent that from happening without an expensive device or a, I should say rare you're never going to find one of those here I am at the Atlas Craftsman lathe and most smaller lathes matter of fact I think all smaller lathes are, lathes are totally devoid of that tang slot we talked about but if you use a lathe dog and rest the tail of it on your compound and probably should straighten the compound this will prevent it from spinning however it may still get pulled out by the helix angle or action of a drill so try that if you are ever troubled by what I'm talking about and it's more common on large drills I'm showing you a relatively small diameter drill have you ever done this that's the end of this long video if you liked it please give me a thumbs up I know I may have been a little bit opinionated and uh, abrasive in my comments here but so be it I'm not I'm not sorry for doing it but <laughs> that kind of explains what's happening here to many beginners you older guys know all of this stuff or you experienced machinists if any are watching so this Mr. Pete saying so long for now and I'll see you next time lots more videos to come as I start to feel a little better